Hi, middle schoolers. We're back for week two of three as we focus on how we can approach the holidays this year. So I want you to think for a moment, what are some of your favorite uh, things about Christmas, favorite things about the holidays? And be honest with yourself. We probably, um, if we were able to share in person, would come up with a lot of common responses. We would talk about maybe getting gifts that we uh, love decorating the Christmas tree and looking at Christmas lights, listening to Christmas music, having a lavish uh, Christmas dinner or Christmas brunch. Physical realities help us to understand invisible realities. We love symbols and traditions because they make spiritual truths personal and meaningful for us. Christmas is a perfect example of this. Even non-Christians enjoy uh, several Christmas symbols and traditions, like decorating a Christmas tree, like giving gifts, because they symbolize or call to mind things like joy and kindness, generosity, compassion, care for family and friends. And it's not wrong to love the externals of Christmas. But some people feel that we have lost the true meaning of Christmas because we're too focused on external things. And in many ways, this is true. We should never lose sight of the birth of Jesus in the midst of ornaments and Christmas carols and ugly Christmas sweaters. The physical things, the physical as aspects of Christmas can remind us of Christ's presence can point us back to God. Because of COVID-19, many people will lose out on Christmas traditions this year. And that might be true for you. And it's okay to grieve this loss. You are not selfish for grieving these things. You are not a bad person for grieving these, grieving these things. It's okay to feel sad that some of these things are not going to be present, are not going to be a reality this year. Maybe you can't um, exchange presents with some of your extended family members. Maybe you don't get to have a Christmas concert for band or choir this year. Maybe you don't uh, get to have your, your grandma's home-cooked meal for Christmas. It's okay to grieve these losses. And even if your Christmas does look a lot like it normally does this upcoming year, it's good to be aware that you may have friends, you likely do have friends, who are, are grieving a lot of things this holiday season. The external parts of Christmas are not the main parts of, of our holiday, are not the main reason for the season. But they are meaningful, and it's okay, and it's good to enjoy them. It's understandable if you feel sad about losing traditional, um, traditional aspects of your holiday celebrations. And in that midst of, of loss and sadness and maybe even despair, it's good and it's necessary to turn our attention back to Jesus Christ. We focus our Christmas celebration, our Advent on awaiting the birth of Jesus, celebrating the birth of Jesus. So we turn back once again to our gospel account on the nativity of Christ. And so Joseph too went up from Galilee, from a town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there is no room for them in the inn. Last session, you will recall that we talked about the circumstances and events leading up to the birth of Jesus and how many things were outside of Mary's control, outside of Joseph's control, that put them in uncomfortable and challenging situations as they came to Bethlehem as they had no place to stay, stay, as Mary suddenly goes into labor. 
Mary and, Joseph's, Mary and Joseph found themselves in the stable, surrounded by animals, welcoming Jesus, the Son of God, into this world. And it's easy for us to imagine that this was not what Mary had in mind when thinking about giving birth. It's not the setting she probably wanted to be in. She probably would have much preferred to be in her home. But there's something remarkable about this whole story. Because God could have chosen for Jesus to be born in a great hall, in a great palace, surrounded by every amenity, every comfort. God could have chosen circumstances for the birth of Jesus that could have resulted in Jesus being placed in a golden cradle rather than in a food trough. But God doesn't. Rather, Jesus comes into our world in a most unexpected way, in a lowly stable, in very humble circumstances. The first Christmas reminds us that our Christmas is not about material wealth. It's not about how beautiful the decorations are or how beautiful our Christmas tree is. It's not about our Christmas dinner. It's not about the presents we get. It's not about our family Christmas uh, photograph card. Christmas is about so much more. It's about remembering the truth that God loves us so much that he enters into our human existence. That God loves us so much that he sends his only son, Jesus Christ, into our world in this humble way as a humble baby child. That God takes on human flesh, that God in, in becoming human becomes so limited, but does so out of love for us. That God becomes one of us becomes human to save us, becomes human to ultimately give that humanity up through death to save us. That Jesus loves us so much to become one of us. On Christmas, we remember that our reality has changed. On Christmas, we don't just celebrate a nice event that happened 2,000 years ago. But we recall, we acknowledge that we are living in a reality transformed by the incarnation. That we are living in an existence changed by the fact that God became one of us. That through the life of this, this child who comes to us, this child Jesus, through his, his life, through his death, we are reconciled back to God, reconciled back to the Father. And this is worth celebrating. It's not just a nice idea. It's not just a nice Christmas card or a Christmas song. It's recognizing that we are living in a transformed reality. That through the incarnation and then ultimately the death, and resurrection of Jesus, our salvation has been won. The physical things surrounding Christmas can make us happy, but that happiness is temporary. Eventually, we'll put the Christmas decorations back away. By early January, we'll be sick of Christ singing Christmas songs, and our Christmas cookies will likely be gone. But we have a much greater gift given to us on Christmas. A Savior who is deeply and madly in love with us. And having a relationship with Jesus can bring us more joy than any Christmas present or Christmas song. Having a relationship with Jesus Christ does not bring us to fleeting happiness brings us to lifelong joy, lifelong transformation. Everything about Christmas should lead us back to Jesus Christ. All of our celebrations, all of our physical externals should point us back to
to the joy of the incarnation. The spiritual traditions that our church offers, like the Advent wreath, the Jesse tree Advent calendars, also help us focus on Jesus Christ. The fun traditions of the holidays are also little joyful reminders to turn our hearts back to him, to be transformed by him. And losing the external pieces of Christmas, like a uh, home-cooked dinner by your grandparents, or Christmas parties, or Christmas parades, concerts, are tough. But this loss is an invitation to allow Jesus to more deeply be the reason for the season. In these moments when we are experiencing loss about what we're missing out on this year when it comes to the holidays, we can more clearly relate to Mary and Joseph at the Nativity, who had nothing prepared, nothing in the way of, of welcoming Jesus into the world. But yet Jesus came, yet God's glory was revealed. This Christmas, we can realize in a more tangible way that no exterior circumstance can change the fact that God becomes one of us, that God enters into our human earthly existence out of love for us. And maybe this Christmas, God is calling you to embrace the spiritual reality. Maybe God is calling you to have a humble heart, to recognize with awe and with wonder this reality that Jesus enters into. And this Christmas, allow Jesus to come into your mess. A lot of our lives are pretty messy right about now. And think about the ways that, that Jesus might be wanting to come into your mess. Maybe the struggles with virtual schooling, maybe the loss of certain activities you'd like to be involved in, maybe the loss of not being able to see your friends regularly, being able to see some of your family members regularly, hug your grandparents. But Jesus is there in your mess, present in your mess desiring to meet you in your mess. So can we draw inspiration from Mary and Joseph? Can we trust that God is with us? Amen? Amen. <laughs>